Hey folks, Ariel over here at Finest. But first, I just wanted to start with saying thank you guys so much for all the overwhelming uh, amount of well wishes and thoughts and condolences on the the uh, death in our family. I really, really appreciate that. There's there's like thousands of comments. I couldn't even possibly type a reply to every one of you, but but all those wishes were um, very, very much appreciated and. Overall, I'd say the family in general is doing as, as well as could be expected. But that's not the point of this video, I just wanted to mention that first. Today I want to talk about seeds. A little bit about uh, seed storage and seed lifespan. This is what I think of as my seed suitcase. Um, this is pretty handy. I, I get a lot of questions about storing seeds and I see a lot of questions in some different homesteading and gardening groups and such that I'm part of on social places like MeWe and such. This seems to come up a lot, so I just thought I'd do a video sharing my experiences over the year. So what this is, which is not an idea original to me, um, I don't even remember where I first saw it, but I've seen lots of people now do this. This is made to be a photo organizer. So it's got all of, you know, it's got that suitcase and then it's got all these handy little, um, you know, individual pockets inside and it's made for organizing photos. But it also works really wonderfully for storing seeds. So this is what I've been doing for, I don't know, three or four years now or something since I upgraded from my everything rubber banded together and stuffed in a cardboard box um, setup, which worked. It was just kind of unhandy because it made it hard to sort through and, and find what I wanted nicely. This has been really, really nice. So it's got just enough space that I can keep on top here. This is my little garden diagram. If the camera shows that well, you can probably um, see the main beds. I've got, you know, some blanks uh, done like that with only a few things filled in that those are perennials like strawberries that don't move. And I just, you know, took my, my original, this isn't to scale or anything, diagram of the garden beds, held it up to a window and used a permanent marker and traced myself some multiple copies. So every year I can write in, um, I like to put what I put where so I know I'm rotating things. And then I also like to list varieties. So if, if by the end of the year, because I think I'll remember and I never ever do, I can go back and say, oh, you know, the ones on this side of the bed, um, Oh, that was that variety. It, it looks like the Royal Burgundy beans didn't do that great for me and the Kentucky Wonder beans on the other end, they did, they did awesome. I'll plant more of one and less of the other. So I like to note the varieties I plant. So anyway, my stack of those just stays in here and I've got a little seed overflow. So there's a couple seeds stuck in there. But then what I did was I just went in alphabetical order. I've got beans, beets, beets, because I do a lot of beets, <laughs> cabbage and related things, chard and kohlrabi, carrots, cucumbers, flowers, herbs, kales, lettuces, onions, peas, peas, radishes and turnips and squashes. Um, that's just how it works for me. Those are the seed varieties that I can, uh, the, the kinds of crops I can generally plant and count on growing here in my cold short summers. Yours may be entirely different. I've done videos on that and what I selected and why. I'm also not planning to cover that uh, in this one. So I'll try to maybe link to those down below if you're interested in that. These are the things that grow here for me. But this is really handy to organize because lettuce, for instance, which I just pulled out here, um, I have a ton of varieties of lettuce. I don't just have one pack of lettuce because I love all the beautiful colors. They're so fun to watch grow. I like making beautiful salads with all the, the colors and such, but you only need so many lettuce plants. And most of these seed packets come with, uh, somewhere in the, you know, 100 or 200 or whatever seeds in them for the year. I'm not even going to take these all out, but I don't, ever use the whole pack every year because I, I'm never planting hundreds of one single variety because I usually plant 12 or more varieties and I've got even more than that here. Uh, May Queen is a beautiful butter crunchy one. This Linux that, uh, that doesn't germinate quite as well as most of mine do, but it's really a pretty dark red. Um, that, that's another rose one. Oh no, the Linux does okay. It's the Merlot that doesn't seem to germinate super well for me. Uh, I've got some salad blends, um, some seeds I saved myself. That's strawberry spinach seed. I've got videos about that. If you've never grown strawberry spinach and you can grow any kind of lettuce greens crops, you should try it. The little strawberries it grows on top are cool. Butter King, I've got Orca, Okra. I'm not sure how that is pronounced. Uh, little gem. Anyway, the point is I only tend to use 
a dozen or maybe 20 seeds out of each packet each year because I like to have all my, my little variety of colors. So then I have a whole bunch left. And this is how I store them. Now again, before I was using this nice little seed suitcase, I just used a cardboard box and kind of rubber banded the different varieties together, but then they kind of tumbled over in the box and it was a little hard to find. So this has been handier. But uh, storage, more important than what you organize them in, I think is where you store them. So this is what I see the most questions about. Can I plant lettuce seeds or whatever kind of plant um, that I have left over from last year? Well, that's what I do. I've been doing this for years now. I've been helping my parents garden since I was, you know, big enough to toddle around in it. And uh, I've been gardening, you know, as an adult, basically my entire life. So I have a little experience with this. So I will, you know, use a handful of seeds out of this packet for the year, and then I will put the rest away. And really the only time my seed suitcase is out here at room temperature is right in the spring when I'm going to plant or when I happen to be filming a video because I am not about to plant out there. The garden is, I, I can't see anything brown yet. It's still entirely white. Uh, just oh, a couple days ago, it was back below zero and we had another four inches of snow or something after an eight inch storm, which is great. We need the moisture. Anyway, it's still winter here though. Today the sun came out, which is why this curtain's closed because it was making a blinding bright spot in the video. Um, and it's starting to create some mud puddles in the areas I've cleared and shoveled. But anyway, I'm not planting yet. So when I'm not filming a video about this, what I normally do is this only comes out for several weeks in the spring when I am actually planting. And I tend to plant all my stuff at the same time because I have a short growing season. I only plant things that I'll grow at the same time. So I pull these out then. The rest of the time where this lives is actually in my freezer. So if you want seeds to germinate well, which means how many of them sprout and turn into a new little plant, um, the main enemies to that are light, heat, and being damp. So in the freezer tends to be cold, dark, and dry. And that has worked really well for me. I learned this from my parents. They always kept their extra seeds in the freezer the whole time I was growing up and I've just continued that practice. And I get pretty close to 100% germination, 90 something percent at least, um, for years. Like it'll take me four or five or six years to empty something like a lettuce pack. Some of these things I plant more of like the peas. I plant so much that I tend to use most whole packs in a year and so on. But you know, I'll, I'll use little bits out of the pack until five, six years later it's used up and, and I eventually buy another one so that I still have lots of varieties. But I, I continue to get that germination rate the whole way through those years and I don't know how much longer I would. I've just never really kept any longer than that except for one set of I had some alfalfa sprouts not for planting in the garden but that I like sprout like the sprouts you might be able to see behind me there on the counter and I had one little packet that I have alfalfa seeds I got from my parents and somehow it got lost in the bottom of a drawer and they had already had it for a while before they gave it to me because they bought a big bulk amount at one time. Anyway, I tried sprouting some alfalfa seeds that had been stored just in a drawer, not in the freezer, in a little foil packet that was twisty, tied shut, not like sealed with an oxygen absorber or anything like that. And when those seeds were 18 years old, maybe 19 years old, 18 or 19 years old, I got about a 60 something percent germination rate. Definitely less of them were, were sprouting them, but still a bunch did. But with this kind of storage, I tend to get a hundred percent germination rate. So you wouldn't have to store your seeds in a freezer if you don't have the freezer space. This makes it pretty handy and compact and lets me nicely tuck it in the corner of our, you know, one chest freezer and um, so that works well for me, but somewhere cool and dark and out of sunshine. I have one friend who grows a beautiful garden every year, but all their veggie seeds they buy in the spring and then they plant their veggies and she might be watching this. Um, and then they set all their extra seeds in their greenhouse where it's very hot and very bright sunshine. S still in their little packets, but just sitting there in the full sun. And they don't ever like to reuse their s leftover seeds from the year before the next year because they don't get very good germination. And I'm pretty sure there's a correlation there. They are warm to hot. I mean, a greenhouse gets hot even here in the summer with the sun shining on it and uh, in bright light. And those are 
enemies of seeds um, being stored well. If you happen to have your own pyramid, uh, the, the tombs under there store seeds really well. I think people have dug up seeds there that are, are multiple thousands of years old, just stored in a clay pot. Again, that's a, a dark and cool uh, place where they didn't get wet and they still germinated thousands of years later. So hopefully that is helpful to think about if you if you're buying a bunch of seeds and like me you don't necessarily use the whole packet in one year and so you have seeds left because if you have to buy seeds it gets expensive and even saving your own seeds takes time and energy so if you can do it once either one of those buy them or save them and then use them for multiple years that's kind of handy and so but you also don't want to plant a bunch of seeds and have nothing grow because that's really frustrating and means you're not producing your own food but if you can keep them somewhere dry and cool to cold, below freezing seems to work just fine, and um, not damp, because of course if they get damp, either they'll start to sprout or they'll mold, and so you definitely don't want that. Um, your seeds will probably store, very similar to my experience over many years, for quite a while, and I hope that's you know helpful for some people thinking about um, what you want to do. I'll put a link to this seed suitcase. I ordered it from Amazon. If you have like a craft uh, store in your area, they might sell it and it might be a lot cheaper. I don't have one of those near me, so that's where I got it. But that is really handy. And the other thing I try to think of is, you know, what does a seed do in nature? A plant grows up and it matures and it makes its seeds and they drop on the ground. And in my area, certainly, um, if you live in a more tropical area, I don't know quite how the plants do it there. Maybe they just sprout right away. I, I actually don't know how that works. I've never lived somewhere warm. But in my area, they fall to the ground. That's usually toward fall, the autumn of the year. And then they're frozen, solid at, you know, somewhere between zero or uh, 30 below zero Fahrenheit or whatever for the whole winter and they're also dark because they're under snow or whatever leaves or grasses or whatever have fallen down on top of them and they, they get somewhat moist but they also are frozen solid so there's no real sprouting or molding going on and then in the spring they, they sprout up so if I, I try to think about what nature does with seeds and that uh, seems to work pretty well I've seen people wanting to store seeds or buy like a, this seems to be a big thing right now as people are concerned about their food supply and wanting to grow more food which is awesome everyone should grow more food whether there's a reason to be concerned about your food supply or not um, buying these like survival seed banks where it's like you know 33 heirloom veggies and they're all sealed up in this mylar foil bag with oxygen absorbers that might work what i've heard i've never done that partially because usually the uh the seed mix comes with you know tomatoes and all kinds of things that wouldn't grow in my climate anyway so half the seeds in there aren't useful to me just given the extreme cold where i live but if you think about what nature does, seeds are not normally completely sterile and cut off from oxygen, and, and people don't seem to understand this well, and I'm, I'm not somebody who's studied this scientifically, but I have read from people who do that seeds need to breathe and they need some oxygen, so that uh, tendency to want to store them with you know oxygen absorbers or totally sealed from my experience, it's certainly not necessary because, you know, this seals up enough that I can carry this out in the garden and it rains on the sprinkles on the top and, and my little packets don't get all soggy. But this is not airtight by any means. Um, you're not going to go throw this in a swimming pool and pull it out and have your seeds dry. There's little cracks around these boxes. There's cracks around this. You know, they're getting some amount of breathing going on. That seems to be something that's, that's good for the seeds. So anyway, um, that's been my experience over multiple decades now of gardening. This is how I save my seeds and I think the that program has a lot to do with why I get excellent germination rates year after year after year which saves me time and energy and money and lets me grow lots and lots of varieties every year and have my bits of seeds left from all those varieties every year. Anyway, I hope that's helpful for someone else who's got questions about seed saving and germination and storage and uh, can you reuse your seeds from last year. And even if you've stored them somewhere that was hot and sunny and as long as they didn't like obviously mold or something from the damp from last year and you're thinking, oh, well, I can't plant them this year because Ariel said they won't sprout because I did that. Well, try them. Like I said, that those, you know, nearly two decade old alfalfa sprouts, still 60% of them sprouted. That was a bunch. But if you want to keep more seeds for next year, maybe store them a little different. You'll probably get a better percentage of germination. Hope you guys all have a good day. Just figured I'd do this video now even though I can't be planting seeds yet because I know in a bunch of places around the country you all are. Hopefully that's helpful. Have a great day.
Carl over here at Finest. Thank you so much for watching these videos and spending some of your very valuable time choosing to do that. We hope you found something that was useful, educational, helpful, maybe save someone else some time and trouble, or just something just plain beautiful. If you don't want to miss any videos, subscribe and hit the bell. And thanks for coming along on our journey as we build a new little homestead with our tiny house and everything to come.